Hey, it's Biddy Penny, and I have some treats in store for you today. So let's make some cards. I am so happy to be back with Not Too Shabby, and this month I'm playing with Grouchy Pets. <laughs> I just love this stamp and die set. It's from CC Designs and the dies cut beautifully around all the edges and the tails and the whiskers. I'm also using this Crafty Mill um, stamp set from Picket Fence. All of these are available right now at Not Too Shabby. This one just had some really great sentiments. I wanted to make these grouchy pets like... Um, in a crafters kind of way so like if we don't get to craft if we don't get to make cards we get a little grouchy that kind of feeling so when I get a new stamp set I measure my images it helps me kind of think of design um, and I left a lot of coloring in for you guys today I did try to leave the caps or show the caps um, and I also sped this up so we wouldn't be here all day, but I just had a whole lot of fun coloring these up. So I'm gonna color up this little Yorkie, I believe, um, and then the poodle. And I'm gonna show you guys how I colored a Siamese cat, which is up in the top left there. I mean, it doesn't have to be a Siamese, but that's what I made it for today. So in this video, I've got different tips for you guys um, and I'm going to be making four cards. So I um, just had so much fun. I kind of got lost in coloring bliss, um, coloring up these images. I use kind of a whole array of alcohol markers. So in this video alone, you'll see me using Arteza, you'll see me using Spectrum and Copics. If you guys didn't know, Jamie actually carries Copics um, in the shop. And so if you're needing a few to fill out your rainbow, um, you know, Jamie's shop is a great place to get them. And always remember to use the coupon code. Um, and then she has specials that go on, you know, at different times throughout the year. I believe also if you're part of the subscribe, if you subscribe to her um, card kit, you might also get an additional discount. So, um, you know, definitely explore all that Not Too Shabby has to offer because it's a lot. <laughs> I keep seeing some great new releases. So for this poodle, I wanted just a skin tone, a tan skin tone for the poodle. And then of course, all of the hair to be pink. Um, I just love poodles. And my godmother was a dog groomer. And she said one of her only regrets was not having a hot pink poodle. <laughs> She always had such a great sense of humor. And so anytime I see a poodle image, I just always think of her and I have to color them pink in honor of her. So uh, this one's for Bobby Ann. <laughs> so I'm just coloring this up now. I don't have tremendous skills, but I'm just using the lines that are already there for my darker pink. And then I'm adding some fluffy little curly lines because um, I want her to be extra poofy. And that's kind of how I color. I do keep it pretty simple. Most of the time it's about a two color blend. Sometimes it's three, like on this little bow. I'm just gonna do a quick two color blend and add dark lines where the lines are already drawn in. So I grabbed my phone and I just Googled Siamese cat and I found one that I thought was fun and kind of matched the same pose as my stamped image. So that's something else when you're, maybe you have some cats um, stamps or dog stamps and you can you know, look for inspiration where they're in this, even in the same pose as maybe your stamp, which can help you kind of have a cheat sheet for coloring these types of things. I'd never colored a Siamese before, so I really needed a little extra guidance. My roommate back in college, she had a Siamese cat named Lucy, 
and she was so sweet and cuddly. I, I really loved Lucy, so, <laughs> and I love Lucille Ball too. <laughs> there must have been a connection. I hope you guys are doing great today. Uh, this is being released on a Friday, so happy Friday, everybody. I know I'm happy it's Friday. <laughs> ready for the weekend. I get to craft on Saturdays, so I always get excited about a Friday. I'm just one day closer to getting to craft. I had a whole lot of fun making these cards. Um, in fact, it was so funny because my family was waiting on me to finish these because we were taking a day trip and it was early in the morning. And um, they had just had to wait until I was done because I was having too much fun. And they did. They were such good sports. So these dies cut out like between the poodle's uh, head and ear and tail. And I just really love the way these cut. I got such a great cut, um, which is good since I had already colored them all up. I'm using the micro pore tape to tape these down before I run them through my Gemini Junior. When things cut so precisely, I like to use my micro pore tape. So here's how they came out. And um, I pulled this really cute kit. Um, it's the things I have left over from a not too shabby kit from last year. And it was all crafty goodness. And I had 10 pages left of my pattern paper. And so I used them here today. And then I'm also getting my sentiments ready. So on the front of each card, I'm using the sentiment must make stuff. I know that's how I feel, right? Like crafting therapy, must make something. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> that's what the pets are saying anyways. So on the outside, it's must make stuff. The inside says, I'm sending this to you because only a crafty friend would understand. I think this is going to make four adorable cards for my crafty friends. I think we all get each other. That's why we're here, right? <laughs> That's why I'm on YouTube is just for the community. So I am made these all into five by seven cards and I am using the four by six paper, but, um, in a way that it fills it up enough for me. I know it kind of has wide margins at the top and the bottom, but that really doesn't bother me. So this is um, a five by six by the time I put the sides on. And one thing I want to show y'all is my trick for this. So I had cut this six by six paper down to four inches. So it was four by six. I took the two inch piece and cut those down to one inch so they are one by six. And then I brought in my scoreboard because I sometimes struggle getting, um, when I'm adding smaller pieces like this around a sheet, I get wonky. I don't get things straight. So I thought that using this was a good way to get everything lined up and to make sure it was exactly how wide I wanted it to be. So I wanted it to be about four and a half inches wide, but I knew I had six inches of paper. So by putting it on here, I was able to measure it out. So here with my next piece, you know, I put it down so that the four inch piece was basically um, at the half. I started it at the half. I kind of centered it at the half. Um, and then I could put these other pieces on the outside. And it really worked for me, um, making sure like here that when I put this piece down, it's at four and a half. So that's the first one I attach. Then I can easily attach this other one, making it sure it's fully aligned to the left side of my board at the zero. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, if you struggle like me, it's just a little hack for you to line up pieces like this. So that's how I did all of these backgrounds. Um, and my glue was getting kind of stuck here. And then I gave it some real pressure and a whole bunch came out. So I just kind of um, used a, that glue for two pieces and added a little extra to those. So it happens. It's another way to deal with it when it does. 
just relatable issues, right? And we all go through at one time or another. So I heared all my bases down. I did everything in a mass production kind of way. I used a cat scrappiness die. This is a, like a wonky circle die. And I used that for some vellum. I really wanted um, my little scene here to kind of be popped up from the patterned paper. So I really like the way the vellum, what it adds to the card. And then I just played around um, with different elements and um, where I wanted them placed on each card. I'm only going to show you guys this one and then I'll just show you how all the cards ended up. I thought it was funny that the paint was kind of, um, it had been squeezed out and was coming out of the container. So I made it look like the dog was, you know, squeezing the paint out and added the paintbrush and popped it up. And so that is the poodle card. And here are all four of my cards. Oh, I love them so much. I've been having so much fun. I had taken a little hiatus for two weeks and I'm so happy to be crafting again. It is a blast. So here's that card all finished up. And yeah, I just love that dog standing on the paint. <laughs> I also loved that I was able to use a kit that I had already had and use up the paper. On the inside, my friend had sent me um, some hand-painted papers and I thought that was such a nice touch to add to this card since it is crafty and it's crafty mail from a sweet friend. And so that made these even more special for me, um, adding that special touch of her handmade papers in there that I had gotten as Happy Mail. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Please use the links down below if you're interested in picking up any of these products. They're available at Not Too Shabby. Make sure to use the discount code. You can use Jamie for 10% off your order. And I hope you found inspiration and that you guys have a very crafty weekend. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.